Well, here's a good lesson for y'all. I'm actually gonna catch a queen in marker, which I think I made a video about it years ago when I was using a little cute little marking tube and all these trinkets, and I don't do it that way anymore. I've developed some confidence, whether that's good or bad. And now I just catch the old queen by hand and give her a dot. So looky here on the frame, there she is, big beauty. So I just catch her, I pin her down, get her by the thorax there. And I'm not hurting her, I'm not squeezing too tight, I'm just squeezing enough that she can't move. And see what y'all can see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna put her right on the tip of my finger and then reverse or I'll actually reverse which hand's holding her so I expose her thorax and then I've just got a, a white pen today which white is not actually the appropriate color for this year I don't believe but it's what I got in my truck so there you go she's got a dot let it dry off here for a second and then we'll just release her back on the frame. Some people, I've had this happen. They, um, they'll say, you know, you shouldn't, uh, I'll actually talk to you guys. Uh, I've had before where I've marked queen and then the bees rejected her. Um, they actually, I found her dead the next day. Um, like the bees balled her, they killed her. Um, they see that mark as a, a defect for some reason. Um, I've also had the bees try to scrub that mark off the queen because again they see it as a defect so they'll groom her and they'll try to get that paint off um, if you don't let it dry fast enough you just release her with it wet so honestly I, I don't make it a point to mark my queens I really don't um, there's obviously the reasons to do it as far as you know proper record keeping and everything else but I I should but I don't um, uh, you know, from a from a beginner standpoint, I'd say, or from a hobbyist standpoint, you know, mark the queen just so she's easier to see. But I've gotten to the level that I don't always I don't always look for the queen. I check a hive, I see brood, I see food, I'm good, I'm happy, um, and run on to the next one. So to me, the dot doesn't matter to help find her, and I'm not doing the record keeping at this point. I don't have a breeding program or anything like that. You know, I just I make splits off the colonies that are gentle and that are productive. But I'm not tracking who's who. You know, yeah, this box is numbered number 33, but I don't have an active, I, I've got a note somewhere, actually my kids probably destroyed the book, but at one point I had a record somewhere that said hive number 33, I did this on this day. I don't have that anymore. So that's kind of my two cents on marking queens. That's how I mark the queens. Um, it's up to you guys whether you want to mark them or not, but that's how I do it. I used to use the, the, you know, the little plunger and the clear tube and all that, and that's a good way to start if you're scared of hurting your queen, you're scared to catch the queen. Um, but like I said, I've, I've got that confidence, whether good or bad, that now I can catch her by hand and uh, just slap a dot on her back real quick and go on to the next one. So that's how I do it. Hopefully you guys learned something from that.